So Johan, me and you, we know the power of networking. That's how we met on LinkedIn. We haven't met in person yet, but we believe that networking is key in terms of finding job, finding opportunities and building relationships. But still, for again, newcomers, immigrants, international students, networking is, again, maybe, a, I don't say strong, but not clear activity for them. And then for a job seeker, let's say I'm a job speaker, and everyone is telling me I need to network, hoping that in three, three months' time, a job opening will be, and then let's say Johan will help me. But I'm connected with Johan now, and Johan's company is hiring now. Why I cannot ask Johan, hey, Johan, your company is hiring. Can you help me? Why I cannot be direct with Johan and wait in three months, four months, whatever, hoping that there will be an opportunity, hoping that me and Johan build those, that relationship and hoping that Johan will help me. Why I cannot do it now and wait three months, again, spend a lot of time, anxiety, money, stress. So why cannot we direct with Johan? Yeah, great, great question, Meher. And, you know, the first thing I want to say is networking is a concept that a lot of people don't understand. And they don't, and if they do understand, they don't do it properly. Mm -hmm. So for me, as you rightly pointed out as well, networking is, is not a transactional process. Mm -hmm. It's not a process where you're just messaging people to get what you want from them. It's yes. not a process where you're uh, messaging people to you know, review your profile, to get you a referral, to help you with a job. That's not networking. Mm -hmm. Networking to me is building friendships. Yes, It's building long-term relationships. And when you build a long-term relationship with a person, you don't go in there with a transactional mindset of, of just getting from that person, right? Mm -hmm. That's that's not the right approach. So then what is networking? Networking is um, a, a concept where you're really curious about someone else, curious about their journey, mm -hmm. curious about learning from them and, and building a long-term relationship with them. So you should always think about, first of all, you know, who do you want to network with and mm -hmm. why do you want to network with them mm -hmm. before you go on and execute that plan? Now, once you have, you know, a list of people who you want to network with, you know, these can be people working in the same position that you have and you want to yeah. learn from them. These could be other immigrants, you know, whose profile you find very inspiring. Mm -hmm. These can be people in the same function or industry as you and you really want to get advice from them. Whatever the case may be, it's important to have, um, you know, a clarity on who you want to network yes. with. Once you have that, the next step is to approach networking with three, I call them my three C's. Mm -hmm. Curiosity, creativity, and care. Okay. Right. Curiosity means being very, very curious to genuinely get to know that person. Yes. Care is all about caring for that person. I know it may sound cliche. How mm -hmm. do you care for someone when you don't even know that person? But this is, you know, caring about their journey, their profile, learning from them, you know, and appreciating them and, and you know, praising them because yes. all human beings love to be thanked. They love to be praised. So what better way? to build that connection than to start by, by thanking and praising them. Yes. And the third is creativity. So a lot of people just send out hundreds of different connection requests, but creativity is where you take the time to personalize a connection request, but you take the time to maybe follow them, engage with them mm -hmm. before even you send out the connection request that gives yes. them that level of comfort, knowing that, you know, who you are, and, and and them becoming curious in you, which yeah. always is a good way to start the networking. The next thing I would say is focus on learning about who they are. Mm. Don't focus on what they can do for you, yeah. right? What they can do for you will organically happen if you are going in there with a curious and caring mindset. Yes. The other thing I would say is always focus on giving first mm. and giving without expectations because giving is a lot more powerful than receiving, yeah. okay? And the final thing I would say is, you know, when you talk to them, when you get on a networking conversation or a coffee chat with them, 
take the time to listen listen with intention listen to their advice listen to you know the help they're offering you yeah. and then implement what they're telling you right and that builds the relationship that builds trust and then keep in touch with them and look for ways in which you can give back as well in which you can also help them in which you can also add value to them yeah those are great tips i always tell my clients that identify maybe 10 companies that you want to work and then follow them on linkedin and then find people working there again as you mentioned similar role maybe a new hire and then engage with their content you know check their profile, comment on their content, and then send personalized message asking about them, not about you. What, but I want to ask you as kind of a follow-up, uh, what about reaching to recruiters or hiring managers? But again, you said messaging is important. You cannot say, hey, Johan, I know that you're hiring. This is my resume. I'll be great fit. Hire me or reach out to me. It, it's not original. And everyone is doing that. And recruiters and hiring managers are bombarded with that. Most probably they will say, apply to our uh, website, you know, so that they can pass the ATS system, which we talked about. But do you recommend to reach out to recruiters or hiring managers or be strategic in what messaging you're sending to them? That's an amazing question. I love that question because... Um, there are two things uh, job seekers need to understand. Number one is network. Mm -hmm. And we just spoke about networking, not being about a specific job, not being transactional and building a relationship, which right. you know, over time will result probably in a recommendation or a referral for you. Yes. Right. The other side of this is uh, connecting with people and messaging people about a specific opportunity. So for example, if you see a role open on a Monday morning, right? Yeah. And you know the deadline for that role is on a Friday. Mm -hmm. Now between Monday and Friday, it is very hard to build a network or a relationship with somebody working in the company if you don't know them. Yes. So in this case, you're not really gonna be networking. In this case, what you're gonna do is you're gonna be strategic in finding out yeah. You know, who are the key decision makers for that role and then putting your profile in front of them. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of key decision makers, there are essentially two people. Number one, it's the HR person from talent acquisition, which is typically the recruiter yeah. who has the open requisition. And the second is the decision maker or the hiring manager. Right. So I actually recommend messaging both even mm -hmm. though your success rate with recruiters will be low because recruiters get a lot of messages. All right. But that does not mean you should not, you know, proactively reach out and message. So just message the recruiter and say that I know what is that you posted this role on LinkedIn. Um, I genuinely am interested in this role for X, Y, Z reason. And this is why I can add a ton of value to the team and the organization. And then you give them two or three reasons on why you're such a good fit, mm -hmm. right? And yes. then you can just let them know, I'd love to learn more, right? Keep yes. it keep it very simple, keep very concise talk. and very strategic. Now, if you're also able to use LinkedIn filters and find out who the hiring manager is, uh, you definitely should message them with a pitch on who you are, why are you such a good fit for the role, and mm -hmm. why should they hire you? Like, what's the benefit for the hiring manager yeah. to give you the opportunity to interview? So again, you want to highlight two or three achievements yes. um, and specific skills that would make you add a ton of value to the role. I mean, I've had so many people, Meher, who have submitted their resume in the ATS system online, mm -hmm. did not hear back or got a rejection. But after they messaged the recruiter and the hiring manager, letting them know that, you know what, I have already applied for the role. So I've already done that. Yeah. All I want to do is get your advice on, you know, helping my my profile or my application get some visibility. Yeah. Right. And and all, all I'm looking for is an opportunity. To opportunity. Correct. And, then and I've had and I've had uh, recruiters and hiring managers who are friends of mine saying that Johan, we actually like those kind of messages mm. because now 
we don't need to go over 200, 300 resumes, right? Yeah. We can look at the people who come through referrals. We can look at the people who message us yeah. and that actually saves us time. Yeah. So, so definitely try to do that with every single application. Yeah. And showcase, as you mentioned, the return on investment, why they should hire you and what the other person. And you can be, you know, the problem solver because at the end of the day, the job posting is a, you know, wishful links and then they have a problem and they need this job to be filled so that they can solve that problem. And I always feel that with accomplishment and if they can tie it to money, time and revenue, that will get the attention of a recruiter or the hiring manager to give a call. Absolutely. So you don't want to send a generic message saying, you know, my skills and my experiences yeah. fit the role because everybody is going to be saying that. Yeah. But you want to give, like I said before, two or three bullet points on what skills and what expertise that you have that are directly transferable to this role. And you want to include three examples yeah. of work that you have done that will solve the problems and provide solutions in this specific opportunity. Yeah. And if you can include numbers and metrics in terms of time savings, cost savings, money generated, efficiencies, that will further um, you know, make, make the, the hiring manager a lot more interested and enthusiastic about talking to you. Yeah. Those are great tips, Johan. Thank you very much. And again, for the audience, if you have any more tips about net networking, Leave them below and tune in next time for another great question with Johan. Uh -huh.